Okay. Good morning, everyone. Or rather, uh, my condolences. <laughs> this is me, Johnson Chan. Yes, the microphone is up and running, and oh man, it is 9.09 .09 a.m., and what a complete disaster. Uh, I don't know. I guess the first thing I'm going to talk is, yes, inflation is hotter than expected, 9.1%. So despite everything coming down in May and June, CPI inflation is still way up. So there's definitely a lag time between price, commodity prices, especially crude oil, coming down and like actual CPI. Like even the White House was actually correct in this when they said yesterday, oh, prices inflation is going to come down, but tomorrow's report, which is just now released, is going to come in hotter than expected because of lag or whatever. So... That seems to actually be correct. So unfortunately, my theory did not work in that it's not immediate, right? But it could, but it still obviously is going to work. It's just that it's going to take a while for inflation to come down, especially when they have to raise interest rates at least 1%, maybe even 1.25%. Oh, good. The website's finally working. This website crashed. <laughs> the CME webpage actually crashed. When I was trying, That's why I waited so long to do this video. All right, so we got a lot to unpack here, and yeah, it's economic Armageddon. Now it's just a matter of figuring out how to survive it, all right, and then profit from this. Also, I'm not actually going to buy, actually, what is Twitter stock? Can you go away? Uh, block. All right, um, that's not Yahoo Finance. Twitter is still going up. Okay, so I have to buy it at the open, so I've got 20 minutes before the market's open. So despite everything crashing, everyone's buying Twitter. All right, because uh, we'll change. We'll talk about Twitter in a second, uh, but I'm not going to be shorting Twitter, uh, not anymore. So I already closed my position on that yesterday. All right, so let's get one thing one at a time. Okay, so this is the 75 basis point. So now, yes, everyone's pricing in a one percent rate hike this coming month, but to be honest, it's got to be one to 1.25 at least, All right? And then after that probably another one to 1.25 and then it'll finally be over um, but yeah the, the Fed's gonna have to really hit prices hard and I think I, I think that's actually why commodity prices are coming down well actually crude oil was down a lot now it's coming back up gold and silver useless hedges as always right because I already did the video proving that none of these so-called inflation hedges do, do, does anything PDBC, surprisingly, is actually going up. So that probably means commodity prices are probably going up today. Uh, so this is going to be, uh, this is definitely interesting. So the dollar index is just way higher, way effing higher, right? U.S. bond yields, oh, forget about it. You know, it's it's a collapse. Uh, we're going to wait profile. So everyone's covering... Okay, so the yield for curve inversion is actually going pretty nuts right now. They compare the two-year with the 10-year. That seems to be what the Wall Street standard is. Uh, but I like looking at the overall data, right? And yeah, you don't want long-term debt, so everything's going to be selling off. But, but the central banks knew that. That's why they've been buying it up like crazy in anticipation of, you know, the inflation numbers coming out just now. Uh, Jim, oh God, what's Jim Cramer say? Yeah, right energy names. Uh, Shorty Cramer is up 12% this year. SPY itself is down 20%. Yeah, the inverse Jim Cramer. Fed swaps not fully priced in 150 basis points of hikes over next two meetings. No, it's going to be way more than that. It has to be way more than that. Uh, Shorty, uh, Federal was, yeah. Fed futures now, yeah, this is this is or, this is 11 minutes old, and this tweet is already out of date. That's how fast this shit's moving. Uh, like crypto capital here, uh, correctly called the bull trap that I was seeing, because I was getting conflicting data. CNBC was saying uh, Dow was down 200 points, but then Yahoo Finance and CNN Money were reporting that it was up 150 points. So I was like, what the hell is going on? Like something shady is going on. But yeah. It was a bull trap, so a lot of hedge funds were manipulating uh, against other hedge funds, and then uh, some Wall Street guy just got his ass handed to him. 
you know. Uh, hopefully they don't jump out of a window, though. Hyperflation, oh, no, do, 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 okay, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and then Will Chamberlain actually uh, retweeted me earlier, so we'll talk about that in a sec. Yeah, this is probably what everyone feels like right now. <laughs> Sweating Pepe. All right, so pretty much we're here, Armageddon collapse. Uh, oh, look at that. It looks like the Fed's actually buying up the debt right now. Oh, hilarious. Meanwhile, short-term debt's selling off. Like, the stuff is really hyperinflationary, but we're getting contradictory data because the federal balance sheet is actually declining. All right. In fact, you can see a pretty big nosedive. July 6. Oh, so this number... Oh, this number just got released. Or maybe it was released yesterday, because I know we looked at it yesterday's video, but I don't remember. But yeah, th this is a pretty big drop. This is actually a massive drop. So yeah, it's no wonder the Fed's, the central banks are buying up the debt right now. Let's see, reverse repos. Where is reverse repos? Oh, overnight repos. Uh, give me one year. Uh, okay, it's starting to also peak as well. It's actually coming down. So the Federal Reserve should be actually be able to stabilize inflation, I'm thinking. Now the problem is I don't have access to the money supply numbers here. So yeah, why is this going up? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's pretty much yeah, it's pretty much probably because there's still too much money in circulation. It's like a weird situation. Greg says there's not enough money and debt in the system. That's why he says the system's illiquid. Right? But on the other hand, there's so much money flowing around that it's causing a large amount of velocity of money meaning money trades hands, which of course is inflationary. So so we have like a really screwed up, uh, you know, it's kind of like my health problems, right? My, my body's like all over the place. So it's definitely not a good, uh, good place to be in. Uh, in fact, I'm starting to see commodity prices continue to go up. So, all right. Well, I still think they'll eventually get inflation under control, but the problem is they really have to, they have to, Forget about the recession. They might have to cause like a pretty nasty recession, possibly a Great Depression, just to get rid of inflation. And they have to raise interest rates like crazy. All right. You know, a 1% rate hike isn't going to do anything. You need at least 1.25. You got to hit it hard. Okay. And that's what the markets are pricing in right now. All right. That's why debt's selling off. The problem is central banks right now are buying this debt. This thing was up at 1.10 basis points. Now all of a sudden it's only down to 5.7 uh, 5 basis points on the 10 year yield. No, th th this is bullshit. This is bullshit. So, anyway, Greg's video should be coming out in, uh, anytime now. Uh, of course, I've been following more bear market accounts. And yeah, you know, cryptocurrencies, terrible hedge against inflation. It's 100% correlated with the markets. That's why I've been following people who contradict, uh, you know, my own narrative because they actually happen to be correct all right this is actually why the crypto space is such a problem and in a lot a lot of ways so is the political space right specifically with trump supporters right technically i support trump but you know i'm actually logical about it i am only doing it because i don't have a choice right you know everyone knows my preferred candidate is actually ron DeSantis because he's an actual effective person but he's not very persuasive and because America is full of stupid people, right, from both sides, right, they would rather go with some idiot that, like, is very ineffective, right, because, oh, I can't, this is what Trump actually said in an interview, I can't fire Anthony Fauci because he's been there for a long time. Like, what the, what, what the fuck is that, man? You're the effing president of the United States, just fire him. Apparently he actually did have the power. And that's after they did the 2020, like, nasty shit to him. And Trump still was just bent over like a cup. It's so frustrating. If that were Ron DeSantis, he would have just fired, fired them all already, replaced everyone. And then my tweet's already down there, but Mike Cernovich uh, has been retweeting how Cassie Hutchinson was actually a victim. Right? That's why I actually didn't dogpile on her when everyone else on the right was. Because she was completely abandoned by Trump, and she had to ask her, like... She doesn't have a lot of family left, so she had to ask her aunt and uncle to, like, refinance their house to pay the legal bills for the January 6th shit. Because that's what Trump always does. 
he demands loyalty one way, right? And then he abandons his supporters, you know, in a lot of ways, like, you know, Nick Fuentes does the same thing. Because he wants to be like Trump, so he now copies, you know, what Trump does, right? And that includes all the bad stuff Trump does. Like, that's why, you like, like, Trump is just so fucking frustrating to deal with. So... You know, I mean, it's worked out pretty well for Nick and Trump, but not for not for a lot of people that like get hung out to dry. So uh, it's so frustrating. And of course, you know, hardly anyone on the right's talking about this shit because this is what matters. This fucking economic shit, all right? Because when you have a Great Depression, all right, we become no different than you know 1930s Germany, all right. And we all know how that turned out. And it's just so frustrating to see this happen. Right? It's totally preventable. It's totally preventable. But, oh well. That's my little rant with Trump because, at least with Trump, you know, we'll make money again. You know, and it does affect the economy and all that other stuff too. But that's just down the pipeline. As for Twitter, uh, and then I'll let, you, I'll let you go. Yeah, the pre-market's actually skyrocketing. So, yeah, it's pretty obvious that Twitter, it does have all the cards. So it does, oh yeah bearish pattern detected uh so uh, i don't actually know how reliable this thing really is i'm actually curious i've never clicked i never noticed this view all chart patterns long term mid term short term oh boy this doesn't even take into account the lawsuit yeah so i don't know how accurate this thing is but yeah will chamberlain actually i'm probably gonna have to link god let me think. There's got to be an easier way to do this. I don't want to go into this whole thing, but basically, Will Chairman's an actual real lawyer. All right. I know he's actually a rival of Nick Fuentes too, which is funny. Uh, wish I had that much money. Assuming those are U.S. dollars. Uh, okay. So there's nice Will retweeting me. Doesn't have to do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So th I'm going to link directly to this thread. So you can read this. It's not too long, but, you know, I want to keep this video short, so I'll just link to it. But, yeah, basically, you know, Will Chairman's a real lawyer. He's a practicing lawyer, so he actually knows it. But basically, the gist of this thread is everything's taking place in Delaware, which is where most corporations incorporate, in America especially. And Delaware doesn't play around, right? And basically, Delaware's like, you know what? Twitter's requesting an expedited trial two months out. We looked at the contract. Looks pretty standard. Yeah, Elon Musk, you have to buy Twitter for fifty-four dollars and twenty cents a share. That, that's that's the that's the really quick and dirty. But you really want to read the details because I left out a lot of stuff that I can barely remember. But yeah, I'm gonna take Will because when Will bets his own money because he's been buying shares of Twitter, right? He's never wrong. So again. Even though I have my bias, and I obviously like Elon Musk, I still do, right? I love the guy, right? I'm able to do critical thinking and go, okay, what do I believe to be true that is actually false? It's keeping me out of a lot of problems, and it's going to keep a lot of you out of trouble, too. So, anyway, we'll just enjoy the shit show today. I'm going to let you all go. I've got eight minutes to buy Twitter, so plenty of time, and yeah... Yeah, it's looking uh, it's looking pretty bad. But all things considered, cryptocurrencies are actually holding up pretty well. So Richard Hart could be wrong that the Bitcoin bond will be eleven to ten thousand or twelve thousand. And Crypto Capo, on the other hand, right? Uh, God, where is he? You know, Crypto Capo, his range is around fifteen, sixteen thousand for Bitcoin, and he's going to turn bullish basically, right? So I know the bottom is pretty close in, because you, because knowing what happens in crypto is going to affect us in the stock market. So that means the bottom is kind of close, close by, right? See, that's why it's important to like have a pretty expanded worldview and then like you know figure shit out. So, yeah, but I'm definitely going to want to really watch those commodity prices because stuff is supposed to be coming down, not up, right? But again, inflation's red hot, and crude oil is now turning around, huh? Wow. Well, 
Greg Manorino doesn't own PDBC anymore, so. Also, commodity prices have, I mean, yeah, I mean, commodity prices have been taking massive hits, so, I mean, a reversal was in the works. All right, uh, like, subscribe, share this video around. Thank you again to all the old and new people watching uh, this video. I mean, to be honest, do I really need to link out? Yeah, I guess I will. I, I mean, it's for SEO purposes. Right. Uh, like, subscribe, share this video around. Thank you again to all the old and new people uh, watching and subscribing to this channel and this video, of course. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything new to say except you know, Sphere doesn't have a buy tax right now, so I will likely I will be buying more Sphere uh, tonight. <laughs> Whatever is left of uh, the value of Binance coin that is, and then. Uh, yeah, I gotta start saving up money to, you know, pay bills for the next month's rent. It's definitely gonna be pretty bad. It's definitely gonna be pretty bad. And I'm gonna let this uh, crap show, you know, blow over. You know, buy like I'll probably just buy like three shares of Twitter, and then because I because I really don't actually have a whole lot of dough left. So you know, you know, I'm thinking I really wished that I listened to the that I knew about these bear market accounts before. You know, everything started crashing. They thought I would have sold off all of my sphere and titano and whatever, right? And then I would have been in a very different position. Like, the amount of money I could have made over the past few years is just staggering, right? I mean, doing my best, but uh, it's like, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough because there are smart, good people that will make you a shit ton of money. The problem is, you got to deliberately seek them out and then block out a bunch of the stupid idiot retards that are doing the complete opposite. Which in this case would be all the stupid, like, you know, crypto maxis, Bitcoin maxis. And I never liked maxis in the first place, but I just never realized just how much of their stupid thinking was affecting my uh, investing decisions. All right? And that's why, you know, I might be uh, moving back in with mom and dad, which is going to really be a problem. I mean, I'm doing okay now, but... You know, I'm, I'm getting pretty close to the edge. So now it's just about survival and capital preservation, right? And we just got to wait for the Fed, you know, to fix uh, fix these problems. And what's interesting is Richard Hart even said that Zero Hedge uh, blocked him. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, I already did that. Going as hard money, Hex is easy money. Yeah, I mean, he's... I mean, I do want to buy Hex, but I'm not buying it on Ethereum, and I don't want to buy it through a centralized exchange. I'm just going to wait for his Pulse Chain thing to come out. And right now, I mean, it's perfectly correlated with the markets anyway, so everything's down anyway. Scandal is a free to me. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, this is a tweet. I already retweeted it. I'm the best person in crypto. Ask yourself why Richard Hart is blocked by Coindesk, Cointelegraph, The Block, Zero Hedge, and, of course, Michael Saylor. He actually... uh miswrote it so you know but he corrected it and i don't know who this guy is but apparently he's another uh crypto guy so yeah yeah all right what is this uh stop recording oh oh my god i thought the record button was not working all right 18 and a half minutes but we had to go over a lot of data we had to go over a lot of data so god, adjusting this camera is so annoying all right, I'll let you all go. Thanks for watching. See you all. Tomorrow is... What day is tomorrow? Thursday. Yeah. Happy bloody stock market day in crypto and everything going to hell right now.